In this video, we are going to start the Code Diagnostics Software Essential Training. While we are looking right now at the home screen of the software, you are going to find two windows. A window on the right over here with the data sets that has the names of the patients. That's the recently opened data sets. And on the left over here, we find three main buttons. First button, Open Data Set, which is basically another way to open any recently opened data sets. So you can either click on any patient's name or click on Open Data Sets and you get all the patient's names on the left with some details about the patient. Patient date of birth, ID, hospital name, the scanning machine used for the patient. Then click Open to open the patient data set. In order to import the DICOMs, essentially the data of any scan that come either on a CD-ROM or are already in one of the folders on your computer, you're going to choose the second button here, which is Create Data Set. Once you click on that, you have a couple of options. Either import data from CD, DVD, or import data from a selected source and choose the folder on your computer. Let's say I choose this folder. Click on Import, and it starts searching for the DICOM data on the computer and then automatically imports them into the software and creates a data set. Once the data is created, you'll find it in the window on the right over here, and you'll find the patient's name. If I click on this patient, I am going to open the data set. Before entering the planning software itself, I am going to exchange the last button over here, which is Code Diagnostics Management. You can see here I have all patient data sets. If I want to save, so right now, every data set is saved in the planning software, but it's not saved on the computer hard disk. If I want to save in a specific folder on the computer, what I have to do is this. I'm going to archive the patient's data set back to its folder on the computer. To do that, click on Co-Diagnostics Management. Click on Archive and Restore. Choose Standard Mode. Choose the specific folder and then choose the patient. Then you click on Start Archiving, and the data set will be saved in that folder. Now we have two options. Either save in a folder on the computer and keep it in the software, or in order to remove this data set from the software, just check this box at the bottom that says Remove Patient Data Set from the Database After Archiving, and then click Start Archiving. Once you archive to any folder, it's going to appear as a .caf or CAF file, like this file over here. Patient's name, co-diagnostics icon, and the extension of the file is .caf, which is co-diagnostics format. Let's say if you want to use the software on another computer, but you don't have the data set saved on that other computer. So you can save it to a USB stick or a CD-ROM and open it easily. Now, after I created the data set, I'm going to click on the patient's name. And over here, that's the first window I get once I enter the planning software. And it asks whether it is a maxillary or a mandibular case. I'm going to choose mandible because that's what it is. Click OK. And now that's basically the home page of the planning software. As you can see over here, we have five main views the cross sectional the tangential, the 3D, the panoramic, and the axial view. 
you can see over here, we have five views. A top tab, and this panel on the left. Starting with the left part of the screen, if there is an object that I need to add to the software, let it be an implant, a virtual crown, a measurement, a segmentation, or anything, I go to this plus sign over there and click on it. It will drop down a menu with many options. Nerve canals, teeth, implants, and patient's notes. Distances, angles, or any object I need to add to the plan. Once you add any object, a list will appear here on the left. So the left panel basically consists of lists of all objects you add to a plan. If I click on tooth, now I have a list of teeth. If I click on nerve, I'll have a nerve list here. Also on the left panel, there is this Modify Object Position icon that you are going to be using a lot. Whenever you need to move an object, we have to make sure that this button is clicked and highlighted. On the top panel of the screen, we have a couple of icons. Those seven on the top left are fixed, and the rest of the icons could be different in newer versions of the software. Over here, you could right-click on the Adjust tab and drag any of these icons to the box or out of it to the top panel. You are going to be familiar with which icons you are going to use a lot and which icons need a shortcut and which you won't need. And you can just drag it to the box below.